So Brian, welcome. I'm Corey Feist. I'm the president and co-founder of the Dr. Warner Breen Heroes Foundation. Our foundation's mission is to focus on improving the well-being of the healthcare workforce, reducing their burnout, and we envision a world where seeking mental health care is a sign of strength for our healthcare workforce. And I'm just so pleasured and delighted to be with you today. My name is Brian Sexton. I'm a psychologist member of the Duke Department of Psychiatry. Uh, and I'm the director of the Duke Center for the Advancement of Wellbeing Science. Tell us a little bit about the grant that, that Duke received from the Lorna Breen Act. So it's pretty hard to get busy, tired, distracted, exhausted healthcare workers to do one more thing right now. And so we learned really quickly the need to shrink things down to the, mo the barest of necessary elements to still get the effect. We've actually camouflaged well-being interventions as continuing education credits. So if you're gonna have to get these things anyway, let's just make it about well-being. Now we have 20 interventions that are all, they meet this bite size criteria. They need to be easy, they don't take very long to do, you feel the benefit right away, and hopefully they have enduring effects. They get that protected time, that 10 minutes of that hour is just for them to do something for their well-being. So enough time to show you the evidence and, and, and build, the, the, build the research uh, up around it, uh, and then give people an opportunity to do a self-assessment where they can see on different measures of well-being how they're doing, uh, and they get feedback on that assessment. We've been doing this for a year now, and, and we just passed about 17,000 healthcare workers. What are your goals for, for the program and a little bit more about the specifics? So there's probably two buckets that you could look at in terms of what are, what are our objectives. Uh, one is like two thirds of the workforce are actively drowning in the water right now. They need help right now with strategies that are evidence-based, that are simple, that are gonna give them relief right away, help them to bounce back from what they've lost. One step is the life preserver, right? They need help. The other is more medium to long term, and that is we have to build a cadre of, we call them well-being ambassadors, whose job it is to spearhead well-being efforts in their work setting. That's the person who helps to put new well-being offerings in front of people, keep it at the center of the discussion of all the things that we do. If we're gonna tackle some new quality improvement project, let's not do it at the expense of the well-being of the people involved, Let's do it to enhance the well-being of the people. We've now just passed the 3,000 ambassador mark. So tell us a little bit about the feedback that you have received from those who have gone through the program. When they see this bite-sized stuff, they're relieved. We have a bunch of evaluation questions that we give, and the average across all of our evaluations for this effort is 4.9 out of 5, and that's for uh, over 10,000 people. I used to do bloodstream infection reduction work in intensive care units. I did that work for a long time. Never once ever did I get a letter from the spouse of a participant in one of our research studies saying, I just want you to know you saved, you saved my husband's life or you saved my wife's life. Never once did I get random emails just saying this was life changing for me. What you did was more important than you can possibly imagine. Just the, the wall of gratitude that we have of these handwritten notes and emails and, and, and letters. Um, uh, it's special. What this funding and this kind of moment in time has meant for us is that we, we get to really push that purpose and meaning button directly, you know, every day when we go in to do this work. What would you like to see moving forward for Duke in this, in this, in this space? There's been some progress there, but I, I really would like to see a lot more progress in how we incentivize well-being. The next step is having really good standard metrics that everyone is using that are, so it's, you can make these apples to apples comparisons across organizations. And with standardized metrics and standardized interventions, um, we're gonna see this kind of improvement curve really, really take off. Putting good science behind it as early as possible is gonna really help to make it sustainable, defendable, and permanent. If you fast forward 20 years, I don't know what well-being is gonna look like in healthcare, but I promise you, I promise you, it's not gonna be one thing that we do everywhere. It's not gonna be one, one you know, piece of legislation. It's not gonna be one intervention. It's not gonna be one policy. It will involve a variety of choices that can be made at the work setting level. We can do one of these 18 things, all of which have been shown to be evidence-based. 
and to put the autonomy back in the hands of healthcare workers and, and leaders. It's exciting. I, I, I can't wait to see what happens next.